run through um, some basic stuff, and we've done some, some simple things. Um, I, I think it pays to sort of give an overview of the kinds of things that you need to know. It, it might have been difficult to give this overview before we talked about some of these concepts because it might not really be clear. So you have to be a little familiar with it, I think, to understand the overview, if that makes sense. In, in general, web development is always a combination of skills, right? Uh, there's a combination of the technical versus the design, um, and so on down the line. And the specific skills in ASP.NET our number one, it starts out with basic web development skills. So in other words, you know, knowing HTML, knowing CSS, and having at least some sort of design sense and, and sense of how to put together a good application, or a good web application, a good website. All right? Number two is a knowledge of the controls in the ASP.NET framework. All right. The idea is the framework provides you tools to do your stuff better, quicker, faster, all sorts of good things. And um, obviously, like any tool, you got to know how to use it before it will work, right? Um, you know, you can't achieve the advantages of a tool if you don't understand the tool and understand how it works. So you need to understand that. You need programming skills to take and manipulate those controls. Finally, uh, 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 two more, maybe, maybe I'd switch three and four if I was doing this over again. But four would be sort of figuring out how to integrate one and two together. We've already, already seen examples of where we have an ASP.NET control that we want to style a certain way. And if you remember, I had Fitz trying to style the one link to look a little different. Well, you always have challenges like that. You always have to figure out sort of like, this is a .NET control. I want to apply CSS to it. How do I do that? All right. So integrating the basic web development stuff in the .NET controls, um, I think, is a skill and, and, and needs practice. Um, five is database stuff. You get this stuff, you know, you, you, get the, you get these things down, and you'll be a proficient .NET developer. Um, this, we don't focus on in this class. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the prerequisites for this class are, but many, or most, if not all of you, probably have had the web development course already. So you should have a, some familiarity with this. If you do not, and you need extra assistance, or in fact... If you have had the class and you still need extra assistance, by all means we can discuss that, but it's not really formally part of the class. We can discuss that in lab or, or whatever. All right, so that, this really isn't part of the class. This we've introduced uh, with some of my examples, and we'll probably have more examples about this, but this I'm not going to spend tons of time working on. Um, I've kind of given you hints in that direction, I expect you to practice this and, again, bring any questions. I'll uh, probably be a few more examples, but this we're not really going to focus on. So, what are we going to focus on? Well, we've been looking at these things, all right? And we started out looking at this with a little bit of this. This is going to be our topic for the next while, all right? 
reviewing some of the .NET controls that are available. So we've talked about it before. We'll talk about it today. Might talk about it on Thursday and so on. We'll also get into this more and more. We're going to pursue these sort of together. And this is sort of our uh, topic for the next while in this course, these sort of two areas. Then at some point we bring the database stuff in, and then we put everything all together to uh, have the, the, the total package of everything that uh, we need to have. All right? It's a daunting challenge. I mean, it really is tough being a web developer, uh, being a good web developer, because you do need a varied set of skills. All right? Um, you know, in the old days, you know, COBOL programmers were COBOL programmers. That's what they did. You just really had to understand one sort of thing. But it's not really like that anymore. There's really different languages, different pieces, different components that work together to create in, in our case, a web application. It's unlikely to find anyone that is universally strong in all five of these areas. Um, but again, if you want to be good, you know, you have some strengths and you're at least competent at the things that maybe you're not so strong in. So have some strengths, but be competent across the board. And You'll, you'll generally be in good shape. All right, so today we're going to spend some more time talking about some of the controls in the .NET framework. All right? I'm going to start out with a control that might be valuable for one of your homework assignments. Now, maybe you've already finished the homework assignment, in which case it's like, yeah, great, you know, tell me about it now. Or maybe you haven't, in which case, like, oh, see, it paid to procrastinate. Now I know an easier way to do it. All right. Or maybe you did it the hard way. Well, if you did it the hard way, this will help you appreciate the easy way. Right? That's, that's one thing I wish sometimes. I wish sometimes um, that, that I spent some time teaching old school ASP. Right? Because if you, took, if you took an old school ASP, you would never complain about anything in the .NET uh, uh, family because it was so much harder to develop back when I was a, a kid developing uh, ASP applications in junior high. No, I'm just making that up. All right. Anyhow, so let's look at some controls. And the control we're going to look at first is a panel control. Now, if you know the answer to this, don't ask. No spoilers. Don't answer, rather. No spoilers. For those of you that don't know what a panel control is, what does the term panel control suggest to you? Any thoughts? Control does not take. Right. Yes, I did. <laughs> look at that bulletin board in the back of the room. All right? Maybe that's a panel. All right? Maybe we could call that a panel. It looks like a panel. Likewise, the bulletin board on the side of the room. Now, what's interesting about that? Or, or what it has a potential benefit uh, of that? Or how can we describe that? A panel is a thing that holds other things. Right? So, for example, the panel in the back has three or four, four maybe, uh, little documents on it. All right? Why is that good? Why is it good to have a panel with three or four documents on it? Well, for one thing, if we chose to move it, we could move the whole panel. Right? We could just, if we wanted those four or five documents over here instead... I don't know if it would fit, but over there maybe. All right. Then we could go and we could simply grab the whole panel, move it over, boom, and put it there. All right. So that's an advantage to a panel is if we group things together, we can treat them all as a unit. All right. Now, how is that relevant in web design? And specifically, how is it relevant for your next homework assignment? 
is relevant in web design because oftentimes there's stuff that you want to treat together, put together as a unit, all right, that you want to, um, you know, treat as a unit. So maybe, for example, you want to show or hide a set of things, all right? Um, for example, in your homework, you have to first show a form, then after they've successfully completed that form, you need to hide the original form and show another sort of panel that shows the results and shows some labels and some other stuff and a message. So, you could write the code. The hard way to do that would be to write the code to show and hide every individual item. All right? Just like the hard way to move that stuff from there to there would be to take the first thing, move it over, take the second thing, move it over, and so on. The easy way would be to treat it as a unit or treat it as a panel. So we can hide or show the whole panel. So let's come up with a, let's come up with a little example that we're going to explore um, how we could use panels on a web page to show and hide stuff together as a unit. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to create a website, new website, and I want to use Visual C Sharp, but I want it to be empty. I'm going to browse, and I'm going to put it on the desktop. And I'm going to call it More Controls. All right. So it's creating on the desktop my folder called More Controls. And in that folder, there is the web config. Because even with a empty, web, empty website, it gives you the web config file. All right. that, that, that file is required. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to. Um, create uh, a, a, a page. So I'll go to new file web form and I'll stick with the name of default.aspx. The first page that you create in an app should always, you know, the home page should be default.aspx. In some of the first assignments, you know, everything's going to be all on one page, so that should be the only page in the app, so call it default. All right, so I'll go and create that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a page that oops, contains information about the different degrees, different CISS degrees here at LC. All right? Let me sketch what I want the page to look like because I could do this. There's a lot of ways I could design it, right? I could design it to be a long page and have web development up here and some stuff about web development. Then mobile development here, some stuff about mobile development. Then software development here and some stuff. And finally networking here and some stuff. Problem is that's a lot of content for one page, you know. Um, you wouldn't necessarily want to force the user to be able to, to have to scroll through all those. Alright, so that's, that's one thing. I could, I suppose, create four different pages and then have them linked together. Alright, that's a possibility too. The possibility I'm going to pursue is going to be something like this though. I'm going to have four buttons on the top of the page, one for each of the three, four degree programs. And there's going to be an area here. As I click on one of those buttons, then the appropriate information will show. All right. So if I click on the mobile one, the rest will get hidden and the mobile one appears. If I click on the web one, the rest will get hidden the web appears. All right? So I'm going to do it with one page, but it's essentially going to have 
four sections. And those sections, at some point, anyhow, I'm going to overlay them on top of each other. And then I'm going to show and hide those sections based on uh, which button the user clicks. So that's what I'm going to achieve. Now, if you can imagine, um, for, for this case, I'm just going to, uh, you know, probably put some Greek text, some dummy text on here. But there could be a lot of things on each of these pages, right? There could be, you know, images, there could be links, there could be a form, there could be text. There could be a lot of stuff on each one of those, all right? So if we think of our interactive uh, a page where when we click on this, we show or hide the different panel, it would get to be a pain if I had to write the code to show and hide everything about web development, let's say. Because there might be five or six different things. There might be some text, there might be a link, there might be an image, there might be a form. That would kind of be a mess. It would be great if instead we could just put everything in a nice little container, all right, and then we could just show the container, hide the container. That allows for easy maintenance, right? Again, maintainability is always a big consideration in any sort of software development we do, right? If there are six things in here, if I add a seventh, this part of this container, it's really no harder to, to show or hide it, right? Think of the bulletin board back there. I could put five more sheets up there. If I wanted to move that to another room, it's just as easy to move it with four or five extra sheets as it is with the four sheets that are up there now, right? So it eases the maintenance. So what we're going to do, these containers are called panel controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a panel for each of the four areas. I'm going to make a little navigation and then we'll go from there. All right. Any questions about what our, what our goal is, what it is I'm trying to do? So I'm going to start off by putting in just some general code at the beginning. I'm going to put an H1 and say LCCC's CISS programs. All right. This is up here all the time. All right. Then I'm going to pull uh, I'm going to pull four buttons over and for now I'll leave them uh, and I'll go back and make some changes later. So I'll go and grab a button Pull it over. I'm just doing this just to get the basic layout and all that. We'll come back and make changes to this later. All right, so those are my four buttons. Um, I'm then going to go and make a panel for each of the four. So panel one. And I'll duplicate this three more times. So now I have four panels, four buttons, and I'm good, I can go in and start with the real work on this. So I'll put in, I'll change the name of this to button web button mobile. software, button network. go in and just put some Greek text in each of these.
just so that we have a couple things in here. But again, there could be a lot of different stuff in this panel. So I'm going to go to the Greek text generator. And all Greek text is, for those of you that aren't familiar with it or haven't heard the term, is text that sometimes graphics designers use just as a placeholder for the actual text. In other words, you know, let's say I was a web developer working on this. Maybe I'm not going to be the person that writes the paragraph. Maybe they'll have one of the professors in the CIS department write the paragraph about each of them. All right, and maybe I'm just a web developer who's just putting everything together. All right, um, but I still have to get everything like lined up right and and so on. So I'll take a guess about like what's going to be in there, and I'll mock up some fake text just to uh, just to um, uh, you know, so I can get my layout down. So I'm going to generate. We'll generate five paragraphs worth. And I'm going to copy and paste that here. Five is too much work. I'll do two. I give up easy. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to duplicate the content, and for our purposes, I'll only change the H2 tag. And that should be enough to prove that this is working the way that we want it to. these. Let's go and let's view the page the way that it's going to look. Well, let's change the text on these buttons too. to type and one of them is heavily bandaged, my typing skill has been compromised by one quarter. All right, so let's go and look at this. change. I might uh, change the width of those uh, buttons um, just to make them, make them look neater, all right? Because uh, networking is a little smaller than the other ones. I don't know if that bothers you or not. You know, we could uh, do something about that. All right, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on this to really make it interactive so that as we click on these, we can show and hide the different ones. So, let's go here, and this is an object-oriented world. This is an object-oriented environment. So the question of how to do something always comes down to what properties, what methods are there available for me to manipulate. All right. 
Now, one nice thing about using this frame, framework is that there's some consistency in that. For example, I'm pretty sure we saw before um, that there was a visibility property on some of the things. I think we saw an example of that. If not, I'm telling you now. There's a visibility property. All right. So I can go into each of these panels, and I can set the visibility or visible to true on this one. And then I can go in and set the visibility to false on the other ones. Learning what sort of the consistent and, and what the um, common attributes are um, is part of learning the components, right? One of the five things that we want to master, all right? So when you look at this, we see, okay, visible. That's a property that's going to be on a lot of different things. Pretty much anything that's visual, anything that appears on the screen, there's going to be a visible component or a visible property on. And therefore, we can show and hide anything just by setting that visible property. Now, remember, we can, show our, we can set that property two ways. One way is through our design mode when we're creating it. That's sort of the initial way that the page is going to look. But we can also go back and we can set the uh, properties uh, through our code based on user events. In this example, when the user clicks a button. All right. So now we look at this and we only see the one. We only see the web development. If we click these, nothing happens, right? Because we haven't written any code for this. Let's look at the source. All right. Why do you suppose I'm looking at the source? What am I looking for in the source? I'm looking at the HTML. What specifically am I trying to determine by looking at the source, do you think? What the ASP generated, true. And specifically, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for to see, like, did it generate all four of those? Or did it generate just the HTML for the one? If I scroll down, I'll notice it only generated the HTML for the web development section. So when you make a panel not visible, it does not generate that HTML and send it to the client. Why is it important to know that? Why is it important to know that? What are some implications of that? Makes the page yeah, number one is it's likely to make the page lighter. Let's imagine in addition to this text content there were a fair number of images. All right. Um, if it loaded everything then it would be loading a bunch of images that the user wouldn't immediately see. All right? So that's one thing that, um, that we have. One, one consideration is since it's not loading all the HTML, it's keeping the pages thinner. What's another implication of this? Well, we can't use JavaScript to show and hide the other things because the other things aren't there. So we're going to have to go back to the server to pull up each individual one. That's the six of one, half dozen the other. There's advantages and disadvantages. The advantages we said is it loads a, a smaller page initially. The disadvantage is you'd have to go back to the server if you wanted a second page. If you were smart, you would arrange the pages, whereas the one that you thought was most interesting to people, that most people would go on, loaded first. That way, um, you know, you wouldn't need to click on, to, on it to get the most popular selection, let's say. All right. So now we're going to go and we're going to make the other things work. All right. 